the virtual ordinance committee meeting and public hearing uh, for this the uh, first aldermanic meeting of September, uh, of September, September 14th. Uh, this ordinance meeting is being called to consider uh, one ordinance as noticed. If you would please, Madam Secretary, could you um, read the, the date and issue of notice? Um, it was Wednesday, last Wednesday, uh, so that was September 9th. Okay. New Haven Register. So the, as, as, uh, as noticed in the New Haven Register last Wednesday, November 9th, um, I'm going to read the, the, general, uh, the, the general description here. An ordinance adopting Article 1, generally Section 16.1 through 11, dockage and mooring fees, and amending Chapter 16.1, City of Milford Harbor Management Plan Rules and Regulations, Article 3, General Regulations, Section 16.1 through 35, City Docks and Boat Ramps. In Article 4, Regulations Concerning Anchoring, Mooring, and Security of Vessels, Section 16.1 to 62, mooring fees and schedule, or excuse me, Section 16.1.71, fees for use of guest moorings in Milford Harbor of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Milford. Um, oh, let me call the, uh, uh, if you would please, Madam Secretary, could you please call the roll? Alderman Frank Smith. Here. Alderman Jen Natasio? Here. Alderman Harla? Here. Alderman Sutton? Here. Alderman Vitale? Here. All present. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Um, I don't know, if, is, is um, the line open for, uh, for any public comment? I don't remember if we had a pub public hearing. I know there's a public hearing section scheduled here. Justin, are you on the line? Can we do that? I am. We have nobody raising their hand. <laughs> okay. So I'm going to make it just a, a, a formal call for um, anybody wishing to speak uh, for or against the motion. To indicate by signing in or a record. Seeing none, I will call the public hearing section of the meeting uh, adjourned. And we have, um, I, just going through this and I'm going to probably uh, defer to the city attorney um, and also the harbor master and the marina director um, for questions. I don't know if they're both available. Mr. Mayor, do you know? Uh, Mr. Chairman, I see that uh, Jim Donegan has dialed in via Zoom. I think the Harbor Master may be on um, telephonically. Um, but just as brief background, uh, as you know, we have a new Marina Director. He's looking at operations uh, with a uh, through a fresh lens. And uh, one of the things that we did notice that if you were a non Milford resident and you kept your dinghy or your kayak on the storage racks, it was actually cheaper uh, for you to do that um, than if you were just purchasing a, a boat ramp permit. So right now, uh, everyone who has a dinghy or a kayak on the storage racks gets a, with that, a boat ramp permit. So if you were gonna do that, it's actually cheaper uh, to get a boat ramp permit with a accompanying kayak than it is just to buy a boat ramp permit outright. It just didn't make sense. I don't know if you guys ex could understand what I was explaining, but uh, it seemed to be, you get an additional service for non-residents um, and you get it at a cheaper price. So uh, that's something that we wanted to make more sensible. And there was a couple of other things, including the electricity, 
which it, we don't even cover the cost of the electricity with the rates that we have now. Uh, by uh, jumping it up just a little bit, it basically uh, covers the cost, perhaps, maybe. Um, and then also some of the, the floating moorings for transients. Again, none of these uh, proposed adjustments would uh, impact residents who utilize the marina or the um, boat ramp. It's really just geared for, for the non-residents. Um, but uh, both our, I think both our marina director and our harbor master are on the line too, if you have any questions either now or during the full automatic meeting. Let, let me, uh, let's read the, uh, the motion into the record here. Um, I have a motion to waive reading of the entire ordinance, please. So moved, Mr. Chairman. Do, second. I have a sec, do I have a second? Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. Uh, this again is to waive the full reading of the ordinance. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Or we, do we need aye. to do this as a roll call? Madam Secretary, could you call uh, call the roll, please? Yes, Alderman Frank Smith. Yes. Alderman Genentasio. Yes. Alderman Harla. Yes. Alderman Sutton. Yes. Alderman Vitale. Yes. <clears throat> All in favor. Frank, I raised my hand on the. I don't know if Justin okay. sees it. Uh, I didn't obtain a motion to, I'm sorry, go ahead, uh, recognize Alderman Vitale. First of all, Justin, do you see the hand raised? I did. Okay. I do, I do uh, now, rather. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Good evening, everyone. Um, Mr. Mayor, when you were talking about the kayak storage and the boat ramp sticker, where does that fall under the boat permitting? Is it non-motorized vessel storage? I don't yeah. see it. Yeah. We, so yes, we actually renamed it um, from uh, dinghy storage. Let me see what it said. Um, yeah, dinghy storage to non-motorized because it's not just dinghies that we uh, that we keep in those racks, but it's all it's probably more so kayaks. Probably right. the majority of uh, vessels that are in those racks, the vast majority, are kayaks, not necessarily dinghies. Right. And so the. So the more appropriate term was non-motorized vessels. Okay, so where does that, so the non-motorized vessel storage for a Milford resident is $125, am I reading that correctly? It w yes. And that would include a ramp fee, a permit? Yes. So you don't know, according to this, you don't know that includes a ramp permit, does do you? Uh, it always has, and you need okay. a ramp permit, it, it always has, so yes. Just, okay, thank you. Just to Jim. Jim, I think you're there, right? Yes, I am. Good evening, Jim. Uh, I, I'm also on the liaison, uh, liaison to the um, Harbor Commission, but, you know, beside the one, two, three, four, five items that have been struck out and increased, did we find anything else that should be increased? Um, that would you find anything necessary to increase in the other fees? You know, the five items that we uh, did change there were the ones that really jumped out at us. Um, you know, when we look at other items, this is a difficult year to make those decisions in general because, um, you know, transients has been a different year. We haven't had all of our events and oyster fests and all the other fests that normally take place. But uh, when we look strictly at the services that people are getting, and the costs associated with those, those are the ones that jump out at us immediately. Okay, thank you. Chairman Smith, uh, Alderman Jane Atasio has his hand raised. Yeah, excuse me, I, I, um, my computer just crashed. You just said there was a, an error and it shut down my computer screen. So I'm calling back in on my phone. Um, Get a new computer, will you, Mr. Frank? I, I actually have two here, but the, <laughs> the phone was closer. But that it, it, it probably wouldn't work very well either. That generally what happens. 
Okay, I apologize. We can see you, though. We can see you. We can see you. So, yeah, well, that's good. Mr. Chairman, for you, I, I have a question. Yes, Alderman uh, Genitasio. Maybe to Mayor Blake or the, or the Harbor Master. Um, so I understand this correctly. The non-motorized vessel storage, that goes hand in hand. So when you, when you purchase that, that you automatically um, have rights for the boat permit? Can you explain that? Jim, do you want to take this one? But uh, there is actually a yeah a a boat launch a boat launch sticker that you receive, just like you receive a boat launch sticker if you're a non-resident uh, that you receive after paying one hundred fifty dollars. Um, for one hundred twenty-five dollars, you get a rack and a boat launch sticker. We only have one sticker. We don't have uh, anything else. So, okay. Jim, do you want to give him a little bit more background? Yeah, that's correct. I'm also here with uh, Bruce Carilla, the harbor master. And uh, anyone using the boat ramp, whether they're backing a trailer down the ramp or using it to launch kayaks, needs to have a boat ramp permit. Um, so when a space in the uh, non-motorized vessel storage area is rented, it mm -hmm. does come with a sticker. So right now, if you were a non-resident and right. you purchase a, uh, a seasonal ramp sticker, you would pay $150. Um, or if you rented a uh, space to store your boat, which comes right. with a sticker and parking, it's only $125. Okay. Okay. I I understand that. It's just like, uh, I think Alderman Vitale made the point. It, it doesn't say that on the, um, you know, on the, on the pricing schedule. It doesn't, you know, uh, it does not, uh, you know, explain what you just said. So, um, but. Mr. Chair, through you to Alderman Jean Tassio, if you see footnote one at the bottom. Oh, yeah. The schedule. Fine, yeah, right. the fine print. <laughs> okay, thank you, Mr. City Attorney. Uh, I appreciate that, okay. So it does mention that. All right, I'm all set, thank you. Madam Secretary, we do not have a motion on the floor for this at this point, do we? No. C could could someone please make a motion to um, to put this on on the uh, on the table? So moved. Pray by Tommy. Thank you. Thank you. I have a, a motion. The second. All those all those in favor. Aye. 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 Any opposed? Well, that will that suffice for a unanimous vote. I know we generally do. Uh, we call the roll each time. Chairman Smith, Alderman Vitali has a question. Uh, I'd like I'd like to make a suggestion. Instead of saying non-motorized vessel storage, and you have a one in the legend or a footnote. Why can't we just non-vessel storage slash boat ramp permit? Make it easy, less less confusing. We could do that. We could put that next to it. And that would just eliminate another footnote, you know? Okay. I think the reasoning for the permit initially was to provide a parking sticker so that anybody that was accessing their kayak via car would have a sticker on their vehicle so they could park in the in the boat ramp parking where there's designated car parking. So I think that was the rationale behind providing a sticker from day one to those that had kayaks or dinghies uh, in the racks. So I don't think it was necessarily to, to, to have access to the ramp itself, but to allow for parking at the ramp was the reason for the sticker. But I, I, I don't think one has to do it the other. I just just to clean the language up, to, to make it easier to understand. So it could be just slash ramp permit or whatever we want to call it, rather than have another footnote. That's all, it just makes it easier. And it makes it more friendly, understandable. We could put uh, in parentheses, uh, the language in chief uh, that's, that's contained in footnote one uh, next to the, the non-motorized dinghy 
non-motorized storage space? Well, I would, yeah, I would contract that language as much as possible. You know, if we can put it in a few, very few words, that I think that would be helpful. Thank you. <clears throat> so there's a, a motion on the table. It's been seconded. Uh, I think there's been discussion. Is there more discussion or did you folks there's vote? There's a motion on the table that's been seconded for, for the full. For We're going to do a roll call vote, Mr. Chairman. To I, I believe we, vote, we did a voice vote, Mr. Mayor, and I was asking if that would suffice. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay. Yeah, we, before Alderman Vitale asked this question, we had a motion, a second, and we had a voice vote. My question simply is, is that enough that we have the, we have the motion on the table now, or do we need to have a roll call vote to, to, uh, to put the, uh, the motion on the floor? Just to be safe, why don't you have um, Madam Secretary uh, call for a roll call? Okay, and this, by the way, uh, fellow alderman, is going to be the, a vote to put the uh, ordinance on the table. We had, a, uh, I think, uh, Alderman Vitale made a motion. Alderman Ginitasio seconded it, if I'm not mistaken. And we had a voice vote, but now for the record, Madam Secretary, could you please call? Uh, Mr. Chairman, point of order. Th this vote is is to forward it to the full board of aldermen for for consideration. Correct? No, just 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 to discuss it, Tony, because we've oh. been talking about it, but we haven't actually put it on the floor. Okay. Oh, thank you. Oh, you just need a motion and a, a second. I mean, I. Yeah, I, I think it's it's on the floor. You just okay. need to make a motion. Uh, I'm sorry. That's right. That's right. We're not we're not voting on it. Apologize. We. Yeah, we had a motion and a second, so it's on the floor. Any discussion? All right, now we can go back to the proceeding. I'm sorry. Anyone else have any uh, uh, questions or comments on the motion, please? Any further questions for um, Mr. Donegan or Mr. Carrillo? All right. Well, we have a motion on the floor and a second. Um, is it no no other discussion? I will go to a vote. Madam Secretary, would you call the roll, please? Alderman Frank Smith. Yes. Alderman Jen Antasio. Yes. Alderman Harla. Yes. Alderman Sutton. Yes. Alderman Vitale. Yes. All in favor. Motion carries unanimously and will be recommended to the full board later this evening. Is there any more business to come before the ordinance committee tonight? Seeing none, I will entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. I have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much, everyone. And welcome to the September 14th, 2020 regular meeting of the Milford Board of Aldermen. This meeting is being conducted remotely. And as we begin, I wanted to take the opportunity to highlight a few guidelines to ensure business runs efficiently and that all statutory and administrative rules are followed. In accordance with the Freedom of Information Act and Governor Lamont's executive orders, this meeting is being recorded and will be made available on the City of Milford's website. If a member of the board would like to speak, please utilize the raise your hand feature via Zoom. Please do not speak over one another. And when you are not speaking, please keep your phones and computers on mute. After being recognized to speak, please state your name prior to making a statement. With that, will everyone please stand up wherever you are and please join me as we salute our flag. And then please remain standing for a moment of silence as we remember and honor those who perished on September 11th, 2001. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, to the Republic for which it stands, one nation 
under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Secretary, will you please take the roll? Alderman Beatty. Present. Alderman Gaynor. Here. Alderman Genentasio. Here. Alderman Golden. Here. Alderman Grant. Here. Alderman Hardiman. Uh, Madam Secretary, Alderman Hardiman is here. He's just having trouble with his computer. Thank you. Alderman Harla. Here. Alderman Parente. Here. Alderman Frank Smith. Here. Alderman Winthrop Smith. Here. Alderman Sutton. Here. Alderman Tranquilli. Here. Alderman Vitro. Here. Alderman Vitali. Here. Alderman Willis. Here. All present. Thank you, Madam Secretary. We have we have, do have a quorum. The next portion of the meeting is devoted to public comment. Please use the raise your hand feature via Zoom or state your name if you're using the conference line. Statements are limited to the legislative function of the Board of Aldermen and the time limit granted to each speaker should be three minutes. Residents, taxpayers, and electors may address the board at this time or provide comment through email. The board encourages speakers not to express derogatory, insensitive, or offensive statements or to engage in personal attacks against any individuals. In order for everyone an opportunity to speak, I'd ask that everyone please limit their comments to three minutes. Alderman Sutton, agenda item number three, consideration of minutes for the regular meeting. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the minutes from the regular meeting of the Board of Aldermen held on August 3, 2020. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, all in favor, well, roll call vote, Madam Secretary. Alderman Beatty? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Genentasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Alderman Harla? Yes. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Alderman Frank Smith, you're muted. Yes. Alderman Winston? Yes. yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilli? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitali? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. 14 yeses, and I guess Alderman Hardiman is still having technical difficulties. Correct. Motion passes unanimously with Alderman Hardiman having trouble with his computer. Next item on the agenda, item number four, there are no special meeting minutes to consider. We move on to item, agenda item number five, chairman's report. I, I don't really have any report other than the, uh, you know, we're concluding our long, hot summer. And I know everyone's anxious to get on to the fall. I know they're not anxious to go on to winter, but uh, we're still gonna be doing these meet meetings uh, via Zoom until further notice. So get your computers uh, in order because I think we're going to be using them for a little while longer. Uh, uh, under agenda item number six, report and recommendations. Is there a report from the mayor? That evening, uh, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, uh, I respectfully request your consideration and action on those items listed on the agenda 8A through 8C. I also want to take a brief moment just to give kudos to our Milford Public Schools. Uh, they have done 
uh, good work and hard work, all of our educators uh, over the summer and uh, on this, the first full week of school, getting our kids, our students back to a safe and healthy environment. It looks a lot different than any of the school environments that we've ever seen before, uh, but it is uh, an environment that does uh, continue on the trajectory of you know, a thriving educational system for Milford students. Uh, and they have done a lot of work. It has been a difficult summer preparing for this. I think that they have struck the right balance, uh, making sure that uh, our students continue to have those educational opportunities. Uh, but I just cannot stress the amount of uh, work that has gone into making sure that we have a safe, healthy environment for our children to return to. And most of our children are uh, learning in person. There is a small percentage that are exclusively learning virtually, uh, but we are moving forward right now with the Monday, Tuesday, uh, Thursday, Friday in school with Wednesdays uh, set aside for virtual learning for everybody. Um, but I do want to congratulate the good work of our Milford Public School educators. And with that, I'm happy to answer any questions that come up through the course of the meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. We're open up under agenda item number seven. There is no unfinished business. And agenda item number eight, moving on to new business. Alderman Sutton, agenda item number 8A. Mr. Chairman, I move for board approval of the attached master services agreement between Commerce Bank and the city of Milford and to authorize the mayor, finance director, and city attorney to take all steps necessary, including signing all documents to effectuate said agreement. Second. We get a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? Paul Gina Ginatazio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, through you uh, to Peter, Eredisi, the finance director. Uh, so it's my understanding, this is before us, this is a master agreement, um, which entails any city department that uh, utilizes um, a credit card machine uh, is going to use the same bank. Through you, Mr. Chairman, to, <clears throat> excuse me, Alderman Ginitasio. Um, Actually, what this is, is an AP accounts payable credit card program. Uh, it's been around for many years. It's a way to electronically pay our vendors instead of paying them by check. This program would allow us, if they were to enroll, and enrollment is voluntary, uh, they would be able to receive a, a payment via a virtual credit card that is only good for that particular uh, payment amount. And then after the vendor receives the money into his or her bank account, then the credit card number basically disappears and is no longer used again. So it's perfect. Okay, just to follow up through you, Mr. Chairman. So Peter, this is just gonna be used for payables um, not, we're not receiving any payments from taxpayers or, or anything like that. So it's, it's strictly for payables and we're not wiring the money directly to, to the vendors. We're, we're actually still going to pay them with a credit card. Yeah, we are not wiring money directly to the vendors. Uh, similar to how we pay by check, we would wire the um, uh, weekly batch amount to Commerce Bank, and instead of having a check uh, delivered to the vendor, the vendor would go online and receive his or her payment via this vert, uh, accounts payable virtual card. And who's approving the payments um, in the system prior to them being um, released? Uh, that follows our standard accounts payable procedures. And so it would go through all of the normal procedures for cutting a or generating a payment to a vendor each week. And instead of giving them a physical check, they would be paid electronically through this AP card program. It is of, of no cost to the city. And there is also a component that for based on the dollar amount that 
we spend um, on a monthly basis, we will be entitled to a revenue share. So it actually will bring revenue into the city um, as part of this program. So each department head, so to speak, that has maybe different credit cards um, will be using this in order to um, pay vendors? Well, actually, I, not quite. Um, it, the actual determination is, is by the vendor. Uh, the Commerce Bank will assist us in, they have the expertise and they have a special department that's dedicated to helping us sign up vendors voluntarily. Some major vendors are already part of this program, so if they opt, opt in, then they, will, they can receive their payment via the AP virtual card. And Commerce Bank will help us on a regular basis to try to enroll more vendors because the more vendors we enroll, uh, the more revenue share we can obtain. And this is a, a secure system? Yes, very, extremely secure following all standard IT protocol. And again, the, the credit card number itself, once the vendor uh, signs on and receives the payment, the credit card number is, is deleted. Okay, that sounds good. Okay, Peter, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Any more discussion on the motion? Hearing none, a roll call vote. Madam Secretary. Alderman Beatty? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Janet Passio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Alderman Harla? Yes. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilly? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitale? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. Uh, 14 yeses, and uh, again, Alderman Hardiman is having technical difficulty. We have 14 yeses, and Alderman Hardiman's having continued difficulty with his computer. So the motion passes unanimously, except for Alderman Hardiman. Uh, Alderman Sutton, agenda item number 8B. Chairman, I move that the board approve the attached distracted driving high visibility enforcement grant and to authorize the mayor, police chief, finance director, and or city attorney's office to take all steps necessary, including signing all documents to effectuate said grant. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? With us, with us this evening, we have Lieutenant Sean Moore to answer any questions under discussion for any of you that may have any questions for him. Is there any questions or discussion? Alderman Vitale. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Good evening, Officer Moore. Um, in the grant that we're going to get, it says the objective of this grant is to decrease fatalities and injuries as a result of crashes caused by driver distraction, especially, especially those caused by handheld mobile phone use. I ask you, uh, every year this comes up, I ask you, are there any other distractions other than cell phone do we look for and have we pulled over people for? Anything is considered distraction, putting makeup on, reading books, newspapers, um, anything that takes your eyes off the road or your attention away from driving. This grant is specifically cell phone related, right. handheld devices and or uh, texting. So, so thank you. So therefore, if there's a dog in one's lap, <laughs> and this always gets me every year, there's a dog in one's lap and sh they are driving, would they be pulled over for driver distraction? They would have to be in conjunction with a, um, a violation of traffic law. So the dog itself in the lap wouldn't be considered a distraction. 
if they veered to the left lane or to the right lane, that would consider distracted driving. So just having the dog in the lap would not. So we're not proactive or reactive to this. It's the way the law is written. I know, I know. It's not your fault, but the fact is we never can be proactive with these distractions. It's always after the fact. that. But with a cell phone, if you're doing it, proactivity would be the fact that, oh, look, they're on a cell phone. They may get into an accident. So therefore, we need to pull them over. Therefore, having a dog is not proactive enough saying, oh, they may get into an accident, so I need to pull that person over. It's just so contradictory to me that it's, doesn't, it just doesn't make sense. But it's not your fault, obviously, and thank you for all the work that you do and your de the department does. Thank, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Frank Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. You know, every year we, this, um, this grant comes up and we always have some fun with it, but Alderman Vitale is right. Uh, the way this is applied is, is reactive when indeed you can be pulled over for talking on your phone and you had a dog in your lap or, as we've said in the past, eating spaghetti while you're driving or having somebody in the car distracting you. There are any number of things that can, that can uh, uh, hamper your uh, ability to drive a car safely. Um, I just mentioned that for the record. Um, one thing I did want to ask, um, Lieutenant Moore, if I could, or um, I'm not sure, it, it may be something that he can tell me. This is a $30,000 um, reimbursable grant uh, for the purpose of uh, addressing distracted driving. Is all of those monies used for overtime compensation or is, is some portion of it used for programming? It's all for overtime. The, the grant is uh, given to us through the uh, National Highway Traffic Safety Administration. So we have to follow their guidelines of how the grant money is used. And it's for specific purposes of enforcing distracted driving. Thank you, Lieutenant. If I might, Mr. Chairman, just one, one follow-up. Is some of that, alloc the allocation for overtime, Lieutenant, is that um, sometimes used it, for the purpose, <clears throat> for the purpose of <clears throat> addressing uh, distracted drivers, is part of the general overtime reimbursement. Is it used for police officers um, in training or anything else on this particular subject? You're kind of broken up, but all the monies are used for um, officers on the road pulling people over for distracted driving. I'm not sure if that answered your question. You, you were garbled on my end. Yeah. Oh, so that, that was my question was, where is the money used even overtime? Is the overtime committed to some portion of, uh, of work on the, the driving or is used as overtime? Again, you're, you're garbled on my end, but the, all the money is used for payroll reimbursement for officers on the road, not, not for training. It's, it's an enforcement heavy grant. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Alderman <clears throat> Parente. Good evening, uh, through you, Chairman. Thank you for being here, Lieutenant Moore. Uh, is there any data available in terms of demographics of those who um, are issued tickets for distracted driving? I don't have any um, statistics with me. Um, any, any vehicle that gets stopped has a, a traffic stop statistics form completed that's okay. uh, given to the state. And it's sent to the state. Okay, yeah. thank you. Alderman Genetazio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you to Lieutenant Moore. Good evening, Lieutenant. I, uh, my question is, well, well we let me start out by this. It seems to me that this is data-driven. Um, in reading the, the Department of Transportation uh, Highway Safety Grant application, 
it says that we are identified as the municipality having high number of crashes thought to be the result of driver distraction. So, so this is, um, tells me that we have uh, several, uh, an abundance of crashes due to distractive driving, which makes us qualify for this grant. So as long as I've been an alderman, we've always realized this grant. And I was under the impression that we applied for it. But if reading this, it's almost like they identified us and they're telling us that we need to apply for it based on the amount of crashes. Do you have any uh, background information on that? We're invited to the grant. And then once we uh, give a statement of interest, they give us the grant application. So they're identifying as, as one of uh, the municipalities that have certain criteria that we meet. And I'm not sure what, how they come up with that criteria. Okay, I'm just hoping that year after year that we, we are getting better at this. And I know it's not obviously the, the, the law enforcement's um, you know, a reason for it, but um, it seems to me that, you know, we must have uh, quite a few of these incidents. And I'm also looking at the kickoff dates. Where do you target? What's the locations that you actually do the enforcement at? Um, do you move this around from, uh, you know, different areas or do you just focus on one specific uh, area? There, we pick certain, um, certain locations. Um, certain intersections where uh, motor vehicle accidents occur. I just found a page where it said that, um, that we're, we're selected due to fatal injury crashes between 2015 and 2019. Uh, however, they figure out daily miles traveled, population, crash rate per um, population, and past high visibility enforcement grant performance. Um, what was this? Oh, so the locations are, are chosen by me based upon where I believe that there have been a number of crashes um, with, throughout the city. Okay, well, th that's good to know and I appreciate you sharing that with us and uh, good luck with the enforcement and I'll make sure that I'm not on the road uh, the week of October and uh, April of next year. Thank Sounds you. Good. Thank you. <laughs> Mr. Chairman. Yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, Mr. Chairman, just as a follow-up to Alderman Giantasio, um, in terms of vehicles, Milford, as you all know, uh, has its fair share of uh, accidents and uh, issues involving motorists, given the fact that uh, our city has the most on and off ramps off of I-95 in the entire state of Connecticut. Uh, we have a hugely uh, active a commercial corridor along our Boston Post Road, arguably the most active in the entire state of Connecticut. It's the largest uh, grand list in the state driven by the number of um, commercial establishments that we have on the Boston Post Road. The mall alone brings in, you know, approximately 12 million people each year uh, just into the mall. So we have a very active um, set of roads, 257 miles of center lane roads in our city. We have a lot of drivers, a lot of motorists frequenting those roads. Uh, you know, obviously it's a, a destination for people all over the state, all over the region coming in through motor vehicles. So that adds to uh, the high number of um, incidents in our patrol and our traffic divisions. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Any more discussion? Yes, I have another discussion. Oh, Can you indeed. hear me, Phil? Yeah, because yes. you asked us to use the raise the hand feature. Can yes. you see it? I'm just checking to make sure. Yes, I can. Oh, okay, thank you. I would I like guess, to... The only reason I didn't recognize you right away, Alderman Beatty, was because the mayor had something to interject. <laughs> Touche. I was just... More, I, I had trouble with my audio earlier, so I was wondering if the feature worked. Thank you. I'd like to speak in... Uh, uh, in support of the grant, we've had this come before us other years, and to thank you to Officer Moore, Sergeant Moore, for the time the time it takes uh, to do the application to get the revenue. It's 
uh, as something. But I think the the onus. I agree with the uh, the comments about the distraction. I agree, especially with Alderman Vitale, that uh, the cars, the technology of the cars, have gone way past this grant, and now one can have a brand new car with a computer in the in the middle and never put one's hand on a phone or a device that looks like, and yet be terribly distracted. And I think that that's not uncommon. Grants used to be, uh, think of uh, when we used to talk about spouse abuse, and then we realized it was domestic violence, and it, then it was partner violence. And now we realize it's, it's intimate partner violence. The language of grants and technology change. So I think it behooves the transportation principal safety program coordinator to, to keep up with that. And I also think there's the issue of income inequality, you know, not uh, who hasn't had a son with a 10 year old or daughter with a 10 year old car. If you have a 10 year old car now, it doesn't have the technology that the new ones have and you almost are dependent on handheld device. So it's a broader issue, distraction. And, but the point is it's the grant uh, faults or the grant writers or the people who have the money stream, uh, not, not all police department. So thank you, I'm in support of the grant. Any more discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, roll call vote, Madam Secretary. Thank you, Lieutenant Mayor, for answering Alderman the motion. Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Jen Antasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Alderman Harla? Yes. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilly? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitale? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. Uh, 14 in favor, accepting Alderman Hardiman. Motion passes unanimously, except for Alderman Hardiman, who is having difficulties with his computer. Thank you again, Lieutenant Moore, for attending our Zoom meeting and answering all our questions. Thank you for having me. Alderman Sutton, agenda item number 8C. Mr. Chairman, I move for board approval of the attached resolution regarding a resolution authorizing the issuance and sale of up to $45 million for the costs associated with City of Milford general obligation refunding bonds. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion? <laughs> Hearing none. Alderman Gina Tazio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you uh, to our finance director, Peter Aradisi. Peter, can you give us some background on this uh, resolution uh, and what the time frame is once this resolution is passed um, to revisit some of these bonds? Yes, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Alderman Gina Tazio. As the board may recall, we have done a number of refundings uh, for example, since 2010, I believe we've done six refundings that have saved the city a little over $5 million. So we are regularly looking at our portfolio and trying to determine if there are any bonds that are eligible for refunding and also being cognizant of the interest rate environment. As many of you know, interest rates are at historic lows and Fortunately, we were able to find a number of issues that are eligible for refunding. And so we have placed um, them on the resolution itself. In addition, interest rates are so low that our clean water fund loans, which are at 2% and which is a low interest rate already, um, interest rates are below 2%. And so there is interest in refunding those three outstanding loans as well. And so we increased the um, dollar amount of the resolution to 45 million in order to accommodate 
those clean water loans as well. Um, we are, in terms of the timing, we have our normal bond sale uh, scheduled for the end of October, but we'd like to do the refunding right before that sale uh, because of the interest rate environment. However, we have to get state approval in order to do so. Um, and so the state has received a number of cities and towns that are interested, but due to the complications of how the state had to borrow in order to issue these loans, uh, we have to basically get in queue and it, is, it will be determined upon the state's timing as well. So we're doing our best to try to get this refunding in by mid-October before the regular bond sale, but there is no guarantee, but we're working hard to try to do it. Just to follow up through you, Mr. Chairman, and Peter, are the actuaries um, that manage our, our accounts, are they um, giving us a, a recommendation to move forward with this uh, resolution? Yes, they are. Uh, I've consulted with our financial advisor at uh, Phoenix Advisors, as well as Bond Council, and both are recommending that we move forward and counseled us on this resolution. Thank you. Thank you, Peter. No further questions, Mr. Chairman. Alderman Wynn Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and through you to our finance director. So with these um, refunding bonds, was there any new debt issue that runs along with this? That new debt issue is the regular bond sale that I referred to a few minutes ago. And that new debt issue um, I am working on right now to determine the, the size of that issue um, by analyzing all of our projects and outstanding short-term notes. And we have to have that sale by the end of October because the short-term notes or bond anticipation notes come due on November 5th. So we will be working on that right after this refunding if it goes through mid-October. Um, the other scenario is that if we can't get it in by mid-October, we would do it shortly thereafter the regular bond sale and push it to November. But again, it will be determined by the state's approval and their timing as well. Thank you. And thank you. And just to follow up, Mr. Chairman, um, it, with that new debt issue, is, is there a potential, any potential for negative financial implications from that new debt issue? Or um, has it been evaluated that it's, it's going to be a positive financial effect to have the uh, refunding and then the new debt issue? Um, through you, Mr. Chairman, to Alderman Smith, we believe it will, as usual, have a positive effect. Uh, the bond rating agencies expect us to do it. And the refunding, as it always does will save the city a significant amount of money and so they will look favorably on that as well so we think all in all it is a positive thing thank you okay and again just to follow up has there ever been a time where um the refunding and new debt issue has resulted um not in a positive effect but uh negatively through you mr chairman alderman smith no we we would not move forward unless it were positive Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Any more discussion on the motion? Hearing none, roll call vote, Madam Secretary. Alderman Beatty? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Jen Antasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Alderman Harla? Yes. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilly? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitale? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. 14 in favor. Alderman Hardiman still unable to vote. Adult is unanimous other than Marty Hardiman. Alderman Hardiman is having difficulty with his computer. Thank you, Madam Secretary. 
we'll move on to agenda item number nine. There is no new business. Moving on to agenda item number 10. Moving on to budget memo transfers. All of a sudden, agenda item number 10A. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the attached budget memo transfers numbers nine and 10, fund 1005 and fund 2812, fiscal year 20. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Alderman Ginotazio. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, yes, one of the uh, transfers um, stands out. It's number one, to cover the shortfall in health department account for flu vaccine and COVID-19 medical supplies. I was wondering uh, this question, uh, it could be to uh, the Mayor Blake or the finance director. With the uh, CARE Act money that we, that we realized through the COVID crisis, is this transfer is of monies, is this a refundable transfer? Uh, Mr. Chairman, through you, I'll let uh, Peter DC fill in some of the details, but um, the CARE Act's money uh, for the most part gets reimbursed after we've exhausted all of the other uh, federal grant money that we would be eligible for. So for example, anything that's reimbursable, almost all of our COVID supplies up until September 15th, which is tomorrow. So FEMA has given us until September 15th, 2020 to have expended monies uh, for reimbursement for PPE, for face masks, for uh, some disinfectants, for hand sanitizers, for municipal use. Uh, after September 15th, uh, we will not be eligible for that type of things for other uh, health department related expenses. Um, I believe for the most part, a lot of those will continue to be reimbursable through FEMA. Um, we have been dotting every I, crossing every T to make sure that all of our expenses to date uh, will be eligible for reimbursement or at least those eligible ones will be reimbursable. Uh, some of them are at uh, 100%, some of them are at 75%. But the CARES Act funding that goes funneling through the state uh, then ultimately gets um, to the local level. But for the most part, that is to fill in some of the gaps that we were not eligible for, um, at least when we initially started uh, purchasing for the first couple of months um, COVID-related uh, items and went forward and moved forward with COVID-related expenses both operational expenses and direct purchases. Peter, do you have any more information? Uh, I think you covered all the key points, thank you. Thank you for the explanation. No further questions. Any more discussion on the motion? Hearing none, Alderman, I'm sorry, Madam Secretary, roll call vote, please. Alderman Beatty? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Jen Antasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Alderman Harla? Yes. Alderman Prente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilly? Yes. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitali? Yes. Alderman Willis. Yes. 14 in favor. Alderman Hardiman still unable to vote. Motion passes unanimously except for Alderman Hardiman having difficulties with his computer. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Moving on to agenda item number 11, refunds. Alderman Sutton, agenda item number 11A. Mr. Chairman, I move that the board approve the attached refunds in the amount of $9,644.64. Second. Motion has been made and seconded. Is there any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote. Madam Secretary. Alderman Beattie? Yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. 
Alderman Jen Antasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Alderman Harlow? Yes. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilly? Yes. Alderman Vitrum? Yes. Alderman Vitali? Yes. Alderman Willis? Yes. 14 in favor. Alderman Hardman still unable to vote. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Motion passes unanimously, except for Alderman Hardman, who's still having trouble with his computer. Agenda item number 12. Is there any reports of any standing committees? Alderman Frank Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. The, uh, the Ordinance Committee of the Board of Aldermen met earlier this evening to consider an ordinance um, regarding dockage and mooring fees in addition to an, uh, an amendment to um, an existing ordinance, an ordinance adopting Article 1, generally Section 16.1 to 11, dockage and mooring fees and amending chapter 16.1 city of Milford Harbor management plan rules and regulations. Article three general regulations, section 16.1 to 35 city docks and boat ramps and article four regulations concerning anchoring, mooring and security of vessels, section 16.1 through 62 mooring fees and section 16.1.71 Security of vessel section 16.1 to 62 mooring mm -hmm. fees and section 16.171 fees for guest moorings of Milford Harbor of the Code of Ordinances of the City of Milford. So this was basically a uh, review and amendment of uh, the, the some of the um, mooring fees and other marina fees and uh, also um, an organizational adjustment. It was uh, considered by the Ordinance Committee tonight and passed unanimously for recommendation to the full board. I present it to the full board, Mr. Chairman, as a motion. Thank you, Alderman Frank Smith. Do we have a second? Second. We have a motion on the floor and a second. Is there any discussion? Alderman Vitale. No, I'm getting ready for a report. That's all. And that's one of the committees. Is there any discussion on the motion? Alderman Wynn Smith. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Through you. Um, so the fees here is, is this a, uh, solely elimination of fees or is this a fee schedule increase for certain um, permits? Mr. Chairman, uh, through you to Alderman Smith. And again, we have our Marina Director Jim Donegan uh, on the line too to fill in any gaps. But this was really an adjustment um, just to a couple of fees that affected non-Milford residents. Uh, in particular, the item that was driving this was uh, if you had a dinghy or a kayak in dry storage, uh, you were paying a hundred and you are non-resident. So a non-Milford resident with a dinghy or a kayak in, in dry storage, you were paying uh, $125. Uh, and you also got a boat ramp permit, a boat ramp sticker. However, if you were a non-resident and you just wanted the boat ramp sticker, uh, it was $150, so it didn't make much sense. Uh, the fact that it was actually cheaper to get an additional service. It was $125 as opposed to $150 for non-residents. Um, so that was one of the things that just didn't make sense under the existing operation, the existing ordinance. Uh, so that is what one of the proposed changes up, um, happens to be. Um, some of the other ones, uh, Electricity, um, the marina is actually losing money when boats come in and plug in overnight. The rates are significantly less than anywhere else and don't even actually cover the cost 
of electrical for 30 amp uh, or 50 amp service. Uh, and the last thing is uh, the float spaces, those floatable moorings in the mooring field. They don't get used that much during the course of the summer, except for uh, we are trying to, for this is for transients I'm talking about. Um, but we're trying to encourage transients to utilize those overnight moorings more uh, for next year during those big events, things like Irish Fest and October Fest and the fireworks and the Oyster Festival and the, the Rodeo Lobster Bay when the marina is full. I know that the Harbor Commission is, Harbor Master is gonna be working with the marina director and the Harbor Commission to free up some of the moorings or the floats towards the head of the harbor uh, so that those can be utilized when the rest of the marina is at capacity. And again, all of these proposed adjustments really impact non-residents, either transients or people that store their, or non-Milford residents that store their dinghy or kayak in the Milford Harbor racks. Thank you, Mr. Mayor, and through you, Mr. Chairman, but this does, in fact, affect some of the annual permits for Milford residents? I don't believe so. Um, th those proposals uh, are not being recommended to be adjusted. So, and thank you for that, and through you, Mr. Chairman, so all of the uh, permits and fees for the same are not being increased for the, for the Milford residents I'm, I'm talking about now for those permits. That was the, that was the recommendation that we're putting forward, correct? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Chairman. You're welcome. Any more discussion on the motion? Hearing none, uh, can we have a roll call vote, Madam Secretary? Alderman Beatty? In favor of the motion, yes. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Jen Antasio? Yes. Alderman Golden? Yes. Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Alderman Harlow? Yes. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilli? Yes. Alderman Vitram? Yes. Alderman Vitali? Yes. Alderman Willis. Yes. 14 in favor. Alderman Hardiman still unable to vote. Thank you, Madam Secretary. The voting was unanimous except for Alderman Hardiman, who is still having difficulty with his computer. Agenda item number 13. Are there any reports? Alderman Vitale. Alderman Vitale. Hi, thank you, Mr. Chair. Uh, just from the Public Works Committee standpoint, uh, I don't know about any other aldermen, but I've been getting a lot, of, an abundance of calls regarding uh, paving, sidewalks, trees, trash, etc. And I'm deeply concerned and disappointed that there's been a lapse of meetings with the Public Works Committee. And usually at this particular point in time, we're able to question and ask and become aware of the things that are going on through the public works from our director. So I don't know how anybody else feels. I know we're, there's, we have a chair and we have a co-chair and yet we haven't had a meeting in six months. So can anybody give me an explanation for that? Thank you, Mr. Chair. Mr. Chairman, through you to Alderman Vitale. Again, um, I'm happy to help coordinate with our public works director. I know that there was a meeting that occurred back in June, a public works committee meeting. And I know that there's one scheduled for this month on the 28th that's been noticed. Um, but anytime you need uh, to talk to either the public works director um, or if you can't get a hold of them, I'm happy to reach out as well. But I know that there's a meeting scheduled uh, the 28th of this month that's been noticed already. And I know that last June there was a meeting as well. That is correct. But I, I didn't get an, any invitation for a meeting coming up. You should have gotten one. I didn't. I'll try to make sure that you get one then. Thank you. Thank you, Alderman Vitale. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, agenda item 13. Can I just comment on that, Phil? Just Absolutely. Uh, I, 
I spoke with uh, Lisa Stride, who does the recording, et cetera. And sometimes we have two or three e email addresses for a particular person who's on the committee. So I asked her to prioritize, which we often send to the municipal, to the alders, and they're not always picked up. So we haven't had an RSVP. But um, I spoke with Chris Sally today, and uh, we hadn't heard back from uh, all the people whether they could make the Monday, the 28th meeting. And just in order to put this in perspective, um, I have a concern as an alder, I'm the other alder who serves on that public works committee about the workload. We not only had storm and pandemic and uh, so much going on in the city, and I'm responding to constituent calls as you are, Ray. But uh, so we have a meeting scheduled and, um, uh, you know, he's available. I usually uh, don't like to have an older manic meeting if I haven't spoken to him and uh, he's available. So that's the story. Is there any other reports of any standing committees? Hearing none, we'll move on to agenda item 13, special committees. Is there any report from any special committees? <clears throat> Hearing none, we'll move on to agenda item number 14. I will entertain a motion to go into executive session to discuss item 14A, consideration of tournament turf care LLC claim for concessions. Joining us in executive session for item 14A will be the mayor, Ben Blake, city attorney, John Bertram, assistant city attorney, Deborah Kelly, and chief of staff, Justin Rosen. Is there a motion? Mr. Chairman, I move that we enter executive session under the terms that you just set out. Second. We have a motion and a second to go in executive session. All in favor? Aye. Hi. We're in executive session. Bertram or Ms. Kelly? It says we're in executive session, but I have listed that we still have other participants. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman, and you're muted, but I could hear you from the other room. Um, I move <laughs> to come out of executive session. Second. The motion. Second. I'm sorry. I just want to let you know we're officially out of executive session. Alderman Sutton, we have a motion. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I move to uh, approve the claim for concession as discussed in executive session. I approve. Uh, second. 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 We have a motion and a second. Any discussion? Hearing none, roll call vote, Madam Chairman. Madam Secretary, sorry, it's late. Alderman Beatty? Yes, for the motion. Alderman Gaynor? Yes. Alderman Genitasio? No. Alderman Golden? Alderman Grant? Yes. Alderman Hardiman? Alderman Harlow? No. Alderman Parente? Yes. Alderman Frank Smith? Yes. Alderman Winthrop Smith? Yes. Alderman Sutton? Yes. Alderman Tranquilly? No. Alderman Vitro? Yes. Alderman Vitali? No. Alderman Willis? Yes.
Nine yeses, four noes. The motion passes nine to seven. Thank you, Madam Secretary. Is there a motion to adjourn? Mr. Chairman? Yes. Uh, just a uh, point of information. I spoke with Alderman Hardiman. I don't know if this is uh, admissible for part of the record, but he has indicated he could not get through, but voted unanimously with the rest of the board on all the motions this evening. And he apologizes for the uh, inconvenience. Thank you, Alderman Smith. Is that, is that satisfactory, Madam Secretary? I'll put it in the record. Thank you. So, so we have a motion on the floor to adjourn. Second the motion. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. All in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Thank have you. a good night. Good night. Have a good night. Thank you again. Good night.